Using Monopoly money to scam a jeweler for diamonds isn't the craziest scam in this video. One group of guys also duped victims into believing they were buying lamps that had genies in it. Number 4. Monopoly Money Bruno Nikolic was arrested and jailed for using Monopoly money in million dollar deals and he's just one member of a big family operation. His brother Giuliano and their father Dragoslav, along with gang leaders Gianni Akamo and Dusika Nikolic, conspired to covertly swap real cash with toy money when it was time to pay up. Basically, they would hide the fake money among the real cash to make the deal go through. Then they used a unique desk to swap many real notes with Monopoly money during the exchanges. The family defrauded their clients out of more than 7 million pounds. The Nikolic family didn't shy away from their crimes when faced with an expert, despite the risk. They went on to scam the world-famous master jeweler John Kalea out of 6.1 million pounds. Kalea has designed diamond masks, bracelets, and necklaces for celebrity catwalks and prestigious events and worn by people such as Madonna and members of the royal family. Some of his other clients include Zara Phillips and Colin Firth. Kalea is especially famous for his pink diamond designer collection, which has won him many awards worldwide. So when the Nikolic family struck a deal with Kalea, they knew they'd struck more than gold. They hit diamonds. Gang member Gianni Acamo, claiming to be a gem expert, inspected Kalea stones at the Covent Garden Hotel and offered him a deal. When it came time to exchange the cash for the diamonds, Kalea and his bodyguard worked to funnel the money into a cash counting machine. When they turned their backs for just a moment to put the device away, the gang members switched the genuine euros for bundles of Monopoly money using paper bands to cover the word Monopoly on the bills. Once the process was complete, Kalea handed over the jewels from his shop in the Royal Arcade on London's Old Bond Street. It wasn't until the Nikolic's were long gone that he realized they scammed him out of millions. But Kalea wasn't the only one. They also carried out their crime spree in Bristol and Leeds. In Bristol, jeweler Jack Cohen was defrauded of 420,000 pounds. Members of the Nikolic family met him outside of the Marriott Hotel and handed over real euros for the watches and a cashier's check for the diamonds. But there was a problem with the cashier's check. So the Nikolic's agreed to pay the balance for the diamonds with euros. Cohen was given a bundle of Monopoly money and didn't realize it wasn't real currency until the next day when it was too late. Police eventually found some of the fraudsters at a house in Nottingham where they had a stock of fake money, 150 pounds worth of sterling silver, euros, and dollars. There was also an ample supply of jewelry hidden under the soil in plant pots. Akamo, Dusika, Jordovic, Giuliano, and Bruno were arrested for the scam. Akamo was sent to jail for six years, Dusia for two, Jordovic for seven, Giuliano for four, and Bruno for 22 months. Bruno Nikolic, one of the fraudsters at the center of the scam, was released from jail after after his 22-month sentence. But he didn't learn his lesson and committed more crimes. In 2016, he used one of his kids as a distraction while grabbing a diamond necklace and five diamond rings from a display window at the Marshall's Yard Center in Gainsborough. He was convicted of theft in July 2017 and was jailed for another two years. But it seems like he still didn't learn his lesson. He's been accused of stealing diamonds from a private home and is now fighting extradition to Germany. He was caught driving without a license or insurance and was disqualified from a obtaining a permit for a year. According to the judge, it seems like Bruno's extradition is a sure thing and he'll be leaving his pregnant wife behind. Number three, baby formula. In 2022, mothers were shocked to find empty shelves that were supposed to be stocked the baby formula their babies depended on. Nine years before the critical shortage, people were starting to tamper with the U.S. supply of essential baby formula. In 2017, a trio of two men and one woman were arrested for their role in a fraud scheme that made them more than $200 million in profits. Sharita Nabi, Johnny Grobman, and Raul Doki got in on the ground floor by convincing U.S. infant 
formula manufacturers to sell them products at discounted rates, sometimes up to 60% off the original price. They claimed they had a government tender to purchase the formula on behalf of Suriname in South America. But instead of sending the product to Suriname as they promised, the trio turned around and sold their hoard of baby formula to U.S. citizens at full price. To secure these huge discounts, Nabi, Grobman, and Doki negotiated with baby formula manufacturers, promising to deliver the baby formula to mothers in the impoverished country of Suriname in South America. Doki and Nabi set up a company based out of Suriname called Tropical Marketing and Distribution NV. They created a fictional government office called the Suriname Tender Office to provide false documentation to support their scheme. They wrote out a government tender to show the companies they were scamming, proving that they were obtaining baby formula on behalf of the nation of Suriname. Grobin also listed himself as the manager of several fake companies to make them look more authentic. The trio worked together to create false purchase orders, shipping the products abroad, and then immediately bringing them back into the U.S. in a process called U-turning. Grobman submitted fraudulent shipping documents to U.S. agents to get the tons of baby formula past customs. Sometimes they didn't ship the product at all. One witness at trial took the stand to say that the fraudsters covertly switched the stock of baby formula in shipping containers with sheetrock of the same weight. They replaced the cargo seals installed by the infant formula manufacturers to prevent tampering and used a machine to create identical markings to avoid getting caught by customs officials and formula manufacturers. A fourth man, Edgar Torres, collaborated with the fraudsters to pose as a registered agent of La Mer Transport, a phony freight forwarding company. Groban and Torres used their shell companies to sell the infant formula back to American distributors and split the profits with the two other accomplices. They defrauded about 60 companies and used their $200 million profits to buy a $9 million mansion in Florida, a 48-foot yacht, and several international estates. But one time, things didn't go according to plan. In 2017, one manufacturer cut off business with the two after a truck driver warned the company about upcoming delays. A closer investigation into their operation revealed that their exports to Suriname were a complete lie. After a 13-day trial in February 2020, a federal jury found the trio guilty of wire fraud, money laundering, and smuggling goods from the United States. Grobman, Doki, and Nabi were sentenced to 18 years in federal prison and were forced to hand over $200 million. Grobman requested a retrial, which the judge quickly denied. Number two, Lego My Legos. In May 2022, English couple Lee Hickenbottom and his partner Tabitha Knott were caught stealing more than 1 million pounds of taxpayers' money and using it to buy luxury cars, expensive vacations, and top-of-the-line Lego sets. They also spent hundreds of thousands to renovate their home in Dudley, including a 13,000-pound hot tub that was so big it had to be crane-lifted in. They spent more than 250,000 pounds on luxury cars, 18,000 pounds on iTunes, and of course, 16,000 pounds on Apple products. But the weirdest purchase has to have been the £1,500 spent on expensive Lego sets. Hickenbottom set up a fake transport business, Serenity Community Transport Limited, to submit claims for repayment from HMRC, which stands for Her Majesty's Revenue and Customs. From 2014 to 2017, the pair claimed £1.2 million in VAT related to more than £7 million in fake invoices. But what's a VAT? VAT stands for Value Added Tax. Basically, it's a tax on goods and services paid at each level of the supply chain from the initial manufacture to the point of sale. It's used instead of an income tax to raise money for the government based on consumption rather than salary. Most countries in the European Union use a VAT system, but the United States does not. That being said, many people scam the VAT system using something called a carousel scheme in which a fraudulent trader imports goods without VAT and then sells the items to a distributing accomplice who charges clients for VAT. The distributor sells the items to a series of other companies who all pay the VAT, until it's nearly impossible to track the manufacturer and distributor who first sold and bought the goods without VAT. At that point, those companies have already reclaimed VAT from the government and made a profit on the tax they never paid. HMRC officers eventually found out about the fraud after investigating some of the claims, even after Hickenbottom tried to cover his tracks by transferring £340,000 to family and friends and sending £76,000 to not. In 2020, Hickenbottom pleaded guilty to dishonest claims of 28000 thousand pounds in job seekers allowance and employment support allowance from 2013 to 2016. He and his partner were found guilty of VAT fraud in March 2022 after being tried at Birmingham Crown Court. Knott was also convicted of money laundering. Hickenbottom was sentenced to eight years in prison and Knott received 18 months with a two-year suspension.
Number one, the genie. When Dr. Laik Khan met a group of occultists with a magical genie lamp in India, he couldn't believe his eyes. He even saw a magical jinn appear from the lamp. Dr. Khan asked to touch the genie and take the lamp home, but the men refused, saying it could cause serious harm. But Dr. Khan couldn't live without his magical genie. The men sold the lamp to him for a whopping 71,000 pounds, promising that it would bring him health, wealth, and good fortune for the rest of his life. But soon after taking the lamp home, Dr. Khan realized the magical lamp didn't have any powers, and he'd been scammed out of thousands of pounds, amounting to 7 million rupees. The jinn he saw emerge from the lamp was just one of the men in a costume. He reported the crime to police in the northern Indian state of Uttar Pradesh. Luckily, the police found the scammers and arrested them in November 2020. One of their wives, who was in on the scam, went on the run. These men have scammed several people using the same genie plot and made millions of rupees in the process. A genie, the plural from jinn, is a spirit from Arabic mythology that inhabits the earth, supposedly unseen by humans. They can take on many forms and make magical things happen through their immense powers. You've all seen Aladdin, right? But jinnies can be good or evil and can be punished and killed just like humans. Encounters with jinnies are super rare according to the Quran since humans can't usually see them. So it's no wonder Dr. Khan took the opportunity to take a genie home once he saw one emerge from the lamp. Unfortunately for him, this was far from a real genie. Click to watch one of these next videos. Let us know in the comment section what feels like a bigger scam to you, having to pay social security to the government or the ballot counting process for a presidential election.